Hey guys, welcome back to the Barn Cave. So we've got this new 2022 Shelby GT500 in the lineup now, and I am having so much fun with this car, it's not even funny. So today, we're gonna talk about the five things that I find the best about this car overall. And uh, I hope you stick around because it's gonna be a good one. Not a manual. Okay, hold on a second. Manual, manual. All right, so Heritage Edition 2022 Shelby GT500. Now, I've owned a lot of exotics. Maybe we'll insert a couple in here. I've owned a Lamborghini uh, Performante. I've owned a Huracan LP610-4. I've owned three R8s, a modern R8 V10 Performance a 2010 supercharged V8, a 2009 supercharged V8. I've been like through the spectrum of cars. I also have an 05 GT, I've got a couple GT40s. So you're getting the picture. I'm just trying to explain like, I'm, I'm not reviewing this from a perspective of like, you know, only owning this car. I've owned a plethora of cars. So I'm trying to approach this from my overall experience, like driver and ownership experience from all these things. And I still, still, with full honesty and transparency tell you that this is one of my favorite cars I have ever owned. And I've, I've only owned it a short period of time, but I'm just loving it. So hopefully that speaks to the level of <laughs> enthusiasm I have for this thing. And um, I can't wait to tell you the things that I really love about it today. So here we go. One more thing before we get started, because a lot of comments I've been receiving online, kind of like side jab comments is it's not a manual. Okay, hold on a second. Manual, 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 manual. I have three other cars not here, two of which are manuals. So, oh, actually, no, I have four, because there's one outside, manual. So, if you're coming for the manual comment, I'm gonna tell you right now, I agree with you. I would have loved to see this car in a manual, but I bought it because it's a DCT. So, let's just clear the playing field right there, and now let's get into it. Me too. I'm so excited for tacos today. Oh, I was excited to hang out with you, and then I was like, oh, Ashland's coming, oh, this is even better. And then I was like, but tacos. But tacos. <laughs> we need to go, like, it's fun to it's go get tacos together. All right, so, top five reasons. Top five. Number one, this Number is awesome. One. I mean, we're sitting in the car, it's awesome. Yeah. This, no, I'm just kidding. It just feels so good in here. If you feel like you're, it feels like it's a small car in here. It, it does. Like they make it like a small car. Oh shit! <laughs> That's a traction control on, dude! Yo, we were just sideways. <laughs> sideways. By the way, I don't know if you know that about a lot of these cars. I learned this back from when I had the R8. If you're in sport mode and you tap the pedal to the floor, it automatically downshifts to the lowest gear to get you the best performance. That's pretty cool. That's pretty neat, right? That is pretty cool. So this is not an exception. This does that too. So anyway, all right, now I feel good. Okay, now we can talk about the five reasons. <laughs> Woo, that'll wake you up in the morning. I, oh, goodness gracious. Okay, so speaking of reason number one, this engine and powertrain. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna start with have it. Have to start with that. It, it is phenomenal. The sound, the power, everything about this car. <laughs> oh my gosh. I have not felt that yet in this that car. That was pretty freaking fast, dude. So we, were, we did a second gear pull. We didn't get over 45. But yeah, uh, uh, we're in Mexico <laughs> as well. We're also in Mexico. So this is powered by a 760 horsepower supercharged V8. Gosh. And it 
is everything that it sounds like it is. It is. Now, I've heard some people say that they've even dynoed theirs upwards of 800 horsepower. So it's kind of like a, it's a, it's a recommended <laughs> starting point, I guess. Maybe they did it for insurance reasons. They say they labeled it a seven. Maybe so. It, it's just so fun. That's one it's thing so I really fun. love about this over the other supercars I've had is the rear wheel drive, obviously. And I know That's there's some. Fun. That's fun. It's, it's, yeah. it's just fun. This motor is just phenomenal. And listen, we're gonna, I think we mentioned this already. I did not want a manual. I, that's why I did not get a GT350R. I wanted the automatic because I have so many manual cars. But I gotta say, even with the paddle shifts, even if this is your only car, mm -hmm. this, this transmission is insane. Yep. Lightning fast shifts or just being able to just have both hands on the wheel and use these paddles, the paddles feel amazing, by That's the way. Up. Here, check that out. It's like, it's not cheap plastic. Oh, that is nice. That's metal, yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. Oh, we gotta stop up here. That's reason number one. Yeah. This car just brings me smiles, dude. It does. <laughs> we totally got sideways back there. Oh my gosh, yep. But you know what's great too is the traction control, the way the car handles. I didn't, I still did not feel like I was out of control. Oh, yeah, no. So, there's that. Okay, Same. and as we pass this construction zone, we're gonna get into reason number two. So we'll get into... Again, it's like just oh wanting to go. <laughs> Obviously traction control's kicking in a lot right there, but yeah, I'll this car, it. the fun factor of this car is just through the roof. I mean, oh, yeah. the amount of possibilities. But then also, when you're in the turns, like if you're not really jumping on it hard and, and, and risking, you know, doing something stupid, man, it just holds the road. So number two, reason number two, uh, it feels special. And Miller's gonna show you. Yep. It, so, and what I mean by that, 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 that is a, there's a lot that feels special. I'm gonna start with the, with the front bonnet uh, because the front end of the, I'm an American muscle car guy through and through. I've, like I said, I've had Lambos and, and R8s, but a lot of those cars, when you look out over the front, you really don't see the nose. So when you're driving it, you're really not really understanding what you're driving. Whereas in this car, this bonnet with that, with that, um, oh my gosh, it just feels so bulky and muscular. And then when your eyes go from that, either to, to the rear wing here or to the side profile out the window, you just know that you're driving something that just feels very bulky and special and like, I want to say manly. It just feels manly. It does feel. Is that bad to say no, these it's days? It's a muscle car. It's a muscle car. Yep. And, 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 then, and then on top of that, just knowing what it's capable of via reason number one, yep. it just feels special. Now, another thing, and you're gonna need your camera again for this to show oh. them. Because this is something online that I never understood. There's so many people that say, Ford, you screwed up, the interior feels cheap, blah, blah, blah. Now, maybe my car is special because it's got this, all this carbon fiber. I do not feel like this car interior feels cheap. No. Granted, I do, I do drive a 2005 Ford GT that people say it really feels cheap. And I'm like, it feels kind of cool. It's a very different interior. Yep. Now I can see where like some of the switches and like this, this plastic, right? Like I, I get it, but you look past that because of the way the car, the presence of the car, like grabbing this carbon fiber steering wheel, That's sick. staring off into this, even the little line, like all the little details, the dash, the way it lights up. I do not feel like this interior doesn't feel special. No. I feel like it feels very special. Absolutely. Even the, the whole... stitching, the white that they just threw in, like it was very well thought out. I don't know. That's my I... opinion. And if you disagree, tell me why. Absolutely. I'm going to disagree with you. <laughs> <laughs> Just the way you sit in this car, too. Like, you sit kind of lower. Like, you can sit down here like this. Yeah. And, I mean, and you feel like you're in an old Mustang. Yeah. It's an older, it's a newer, modern, older Mustang. Yeah, I exactly. Perfect. And you can put it in manual mode. I know we passed... I oh just, my god. <laughs> just break it free for a sec. And you can just do that. <laughs> and it's got good brakes. <laughs> so anyway, that was reason number one and two. And now we're gonna go to reason three, four, and five, and we're gonna do it in the garage. So stay tuned. 
All right, guys, number three, looks and style. I love the presence of this car. Not only from like when I see it rolling on the road for you some video that Miller does, but just sitting here, it just, okay, so post 1960s Mustangs, I was never a Mustang guy. I mean, 1960s Mustangs, I love. Past that, it took me a while to get really the, the like, for them to capture me. Well, let me tell you something. There is no Mustang that's captured me more in my life than the styling of this one. I mean, it has, this thing screams American toughness and, and like a really masculine feel. Uh, what do you think, Miller? Do you agree with that? I think I think the color and the body lines, especially. 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 So the body line, let's talk about that. I mean, just from like adding this aggressive front lip and these little side skirts here and just uh, side skirts all the way down, that's what I was getting to. And the way they did the hood and, and like, they, they brought color, like the black versus this. I mean, it just, it's just so aggressive. And from a guy's perspective and an American muscle loving guy, I just find this so bitching. I don't know how else to explain it. Even from like these little, um, these little dials here for opening, popping the hood, right? I just love that they took this classic look right here, right? which is how they used to do the, because this is a GT500, it's 67, and they styled it into this car. How cool, I mean, I love it when car companies do stuff like this. Now, Miller, you made a good point, the color, right? So the reason I picked this color, number one, it's gorgeous. Ford, you did such a good job. Now, this color plays tribute to the 1960s color, the Britney Blue. And I actually had a friend's G uh, GT500 in here that was in the Britney Blue, which is a very, a very common color back in the day for Ford. Um, so I love that they paid homage in, in this heritage edition to that color. And I love the white stripes. Now, there's nothing more aggressive looking on one of these cars than like, the black stripes, like dark gray with black stripes, silver with black stripes, all that stuff. But for some reason, this just, they just killed it. And then the white lettering and the Shelby and the GT500, just good points. Now, one more styling thing, let's come around to the back. The, even the back end of the car, I've heard some people complain about this being blacked out. I personally love it. If you've seen my 67 Camaro Pro Touring Project, I did this on that car as well. I feel like it adds a little bit more of that aggressiveness in the back. If this was all blue going up, it would just kind of, it would be a little bland to me. So I love the way that they designed the wing, turn that black and this section black. It just, it just brings this more aggressive look from the back end. But then it also still has homage to the Mustang. So a lot of guys who are in the Mustang world have described this as like Ford's supercar, I guess. And they nailed it. I just think such a good job. So, all right, on to the next. All right, so if you know me, most of my car collection is two-seater cars. So I, number four, all the way, practicality. And more than meets the eye, I mean, not only do I have a trunk, which has a ton of space. I mean, this is, this is awesome. This is not normal for me. I mean, that could, the other GT500 I have has a trunk, which also helps because oh, it's just like, it's, but also, let's come inside the car for a sec. If I show you the back seat, I chose not to get the track pack because I've got two young kids, so I wanted them to be able to enjoy the car with me. I mean, this is the first car my whole entire family really gets to enjoy with me. So if I move this seat up, it's tight, at least for this car seat. This one, not so much, but it does have ample room for them to sit back there. Now, as they get older, I'm probably gonna redo this video and tell you maybe not as <laughs> practical as, as it is now, but for me, in this moment in my life, this is awesome. Every time I hit this button, it starts right up. And it sounds great, by the way. Um, if I want any, no matter what I want it to do, it just does it. It's a brand new car. It's got all the modern amenities. It has all the modern features as far as hooking up the phone and stuff. So from a practical standpoint too, that's something that I, I, I also can't leave out. It's just, yeah. <laughs> All right, number five. And this is for any of you that are shopping cars in this price range. Price point is number five, in my opinion, because right now, if you look on the used market, you can pick up a used 2020 to 2022 GT500 in like the 80 to $90,000 range. Now, for the car, from what you've seen in this video, that is a tremendous amount of bang for your buck for what this car offers right out of the box. And again, I know it's not a manual. It doesn't matter. 
This car is insane. Now there is a track pack option and I've seen some used ones now going for like the low 100s, probably like the 120 range. So if you're into tracking and you're buying this to be a track car, this is probably the most phenomenal out of the box price range car you can get. So brand new, uh, I think they were like about a little over a hundred thousand. I, th I think the heritage edition, which I have here adds about $10,000 to that. We paid just under a hundred grand for this one. And I think heritage was like a 10 or $15,000 option. You can, you can fact check me on that, put it in the comments. And I think the track packs were originally like 150. So huge bang for the buck right now. If you're shopping for one of these, I would pick one up in a heartbeat. Now Miller, I'm going to bring you into this conversation. All right. If you had a hundred thousand dollars to spend on a car, and you had to buy brand new, would you buy this or would you buy like uh, a, like a Cayman S or like, like where, see that's like the dilemma, right? Where do you go? It's uh, it's hard to uh, to really compare because the Cayman S, anything of that, anything in this 100,000, right at $100,000 price range, this is the most bang for your buck. You have 800 some horsepower, right? 760, 700, 700, over 700 horsepower. You got something that can take the curves literally anytime and you can roast the tires, go drag racing whenever you want. So, I mean, honestly, with style, power, fun factor, fun factor, I think, I think this is it. I think this is the car. We've, we've done some curvies in this and it'll, yeah. it'll hold up all day. We're going to take it to the Blue Ridge Mountains. We're going to take you along. But like, I don't know. It, it's not like the typical old Mustang where like you only went in a straight line. You put tire and you put rubber on the road, yep. which you could do by the way, in first through third gear in this car. <laughs> so I don't know if it were me and I was spending that price for, if I, if that was the only car I was going to buy, it was going to be my fun car. This would definitely be at the top of my list. Maybe, and if you want a manual, maybe the GT350R yeah. would be another. But I am I am like sold on Mustang now. So good job, Ford. You got me, obviously my entire garage, except for a little Porsche, Porsche up there is uh, Shelby. So um, anyway, thanks for sticking around for this video. I really appreciate you joining us. I hope you got something out of this. I know I get a lot of messages about, wow, shopping cars. And now that I've seen your stuff on Instagram, like I'm really tempted to go this direction. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm happy to get back to you. Send me a DM on Instagram, send Miller a DM. He'll give you a totally unbiased opinion, but <laughs> we're definitely looking forward to seeing you next time.